and a 47-year-old preacher with the impressive name of John Oikolampadius. And I want to spell his name because I'm going to refer to his name a number of times. His name is spelled O-E-C-O-L-A-M-P-A-D-I-U-S. O-E-C-O-L-A-M-P-A-D-I-U-S, Oikolampadius. He spent much of his career in the shadow of the fiery and slightly younger Zwingli and occupied a place in relation to him similar to that of Melanchthon to Luther, Theodore Beza to John Calvin, and to a lesser extent, Andrew Melville to John Knox. At the Marburg Colloquy, Oikolampadius met Martin Luther for the first time, but they knew each other, not through means of the internet, I can assure you, but they knew each other through occasional correspondence. They, they wrote letters. We're kind of losing track of what that means in these days. But they wrote letters to each other, and no, they weren't usually delivered within a day or two of being sent. Sometimes it was a much longer time. But it was through reading works that Luther wrote that Oikolampadius became firmly convinced himself of the truth of the gospel and made his own break with the Roman church. They were almost exactly the same age. Now the design of the colloquy was such that Luther and Zwingli were not to meet during the first day or two. That is, Philip of Hesse didn't want the whole meeting to go smash before they ever got a chance to do anything. So instead, on the first day, he set it up that Luther met with Oikolampadius, and Zwingli met with Melanchthon. Now the view that the Swiss party espoused became the dominant reformed view, as distinguished from the Lutheran view. The delegates from the Swiss area asserted that the presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper was not physical, but spiritual. And that those who partook of the Lord's Supper by faith partook of Christ in a spiritual fashion. But the German party was of the mind that the words, this is my body, that Jesus spoke, meant that there must be a physical presence of Christ in the elements. Now, Oikolampedius argued that it was not possible that a physical body could be in more than one place at any point in time. And he said the body of Christ, the glorified body of Christ, was undoubtedly physical, and so it could not be in heaven where he had ascended and on a communion table at the same time. And on that ground alone, he urged agreement on the position that the Swiss delegation maintained. But Luther proved himself to be very stubborn. In fact, there was a point where whatever they used that we would consider a chalkboard today, a slate or whatever, he went and wrote upon it those words in Latin, hoc est corpus meum, this is my body, and circled them. And every time the Swiss would make their arguments, he would take a stick or whatever he was using for a pointer, and he would point, he would put the tip of it on that quotation, and he would say, you have not moved me from my text. So even though the two delegations agreed on almost everything else regarding the gospel and the church, they remained unreconciled on that point. Now by the time of the Marburg Colloquy, Oikolampadius had a well-deserved reputation for brilliant scholarship. 
But he also had a reputation as a resolute, courageous defender of the gospel of Christ and of the ideas of the Protestant Reformation. He was born at Weinsberg in Franconia in 1482. When he was born, his name was Johannes Hauschein. His family came originally from Basel in Switzerland, and he had a wealthy family. And as was typical in that period, if the family had wealth, they could provide for the education of their children. That was usually the only way children were educated. So they provided for his education in the only course of study that was commonly available, the classical humanism of the time. And when he began to study, he began to study obviously Greek and Latin and the documents in those languages, he soon received a Greek name that was the equivalent of his German one. His German name, Hauschein, meant light of the house. And in Greek, that name translates to oikolampadius. Oikos in Greek meaning house. Lampros, you can hear our English word lamp in that word, meaning light. It proved to be a fitting name for him. For his labors in the work of the ministry did indeed provide light to the house of Swiss Protestantism. So here was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he was sent to bear witness to the light. That is Jesus Christ. What Zwingli was to the city of Zurich in Switzerland, and what Calvin was to Geneva, Oikolampadius became to Basel where he spent the last 17 years of his life. He was a preacher of the word. He was an ardent defender of the liberties of the gospel. And wherever he had occasion to travel, he sought to bring light into the souls of those to whom he ministered. That is the objective. I trust for every faithful minister of the gospel to shed light, to shed more light. So in him, the man and the message merged, and so his name was very significant. For he presented gospel light for dark days. Gospel light for dark days. They were dark days. They were days of widespread ignorance. Not many people could read. And most people didn't have the luxury of time for reflection. They were involved in the struggle to keep alive for the rest of that day. We often take life for granted. They did not. For that time, for people to reach the age of 40 or 50 was to have lived a very long time. Many people did not survive to be 30. Oikolampadius then was a man called for dark days. And in considering his life, we have to understand that he was what he was by the grace of God. That was Paul's testimony in writing to the Corinthians, I am what I am by the grace of God. And that was the testimony of this man. He trusted in the finished sacrifice of Jesus Christ as the only hope for the salvation of his soul. We have the idea sometimes that these people who lived 500 years ago somehow had a different experience. Well, it's true, they, the accidents, to use a term of philosophy, the things that were part of their daily routine, their clothing, their food, and the way they went about 
the taking care of the needs of the body, they were different than it is for us. But in terms of salvation, they came to Christ just as you did, just as I did. They came to believe on Christ alone. Now, in his case, it was not some earth-shattering event that brought him to Christ, as was the case with Luther. But he simply was a student. He was reading the Word, reading the Scriptures. And as he read the Scriptures, the Spirit of God came into his heart. The Spirit of God caused his soul to be awakened. And the light of the Gospel came into his soul and chased away the darkness of his mind. And he understood. He understood. For the first time, what the real situation was. He became a Christian. Now, there were many who would say, well, he was born a Christian. And he would have said that himself. I was born a Christian. I was baptized when I was an infant. I was brought up in the church. But he recognized he became a Christian only when he came for himself to rest on Christ alone. 